All right, so we're looking at section 5.3. This is on 228 in your textbook. We're looking at common factors. So first and foremost, we want to know what a factor is. So maybe look at this first before we go into greatest common factor. So a factor is a number and or a variable that divides evenly into a specified product. Example, 2x and 2y are factors of 4xy. So in order to be a factor of something, that term needs to divide into it evenly. Okay, we all know that 2 can divide into 4. Because 4 divided by 2 is again 2. It's a nice round even number. Okay, 2x and 2y are not factors say 5xy. Okay, and the reason why is because the variables can divide into them, but the number 2 doesn't divide evenly into 5. Okay, so to denote something as a factor, it needs to be able to divide into it evenly. So in other words, when you divide by it, you get a whole number. Okay, that's how we know if something's a factor. When we're looking at greatest common factor, we're looking at the greatest number or a variable that is a factor of two or more numbers or terms. So an example for that, if we have the two terms who can tell me one factor <coughs> that divide one factor of these two terms? One factor, John Luca. Okay, great. So 4 is a factor. Okay, good. 4 is a factor of the binomial above. Why? Because it goes into 4, it also goes into 8x. What's another factor? Yeah, 2x. Excellent. So we'll start with 2. We can say. Well, let's say 2x. So 2x. 2x. Correct. 2x. Why? Because you can divide 4x by 2x and you get a nice even number. You can also divide 8x by 2x and you also get an even number. All right? So they're both factors. We can also say that x is a factor. We could say that 1 is a factor. Okay? Because both of these divide by 1 and they have whole numbers. Okay, x is a factor because they both divide by x and have a whole number. Okay, so there's many factors that go into this binomial. But none of these so far is the greatest common factor. Okay, the reason why is 4 is the greatest number that divides into both of these, so I would agree with that. You're close with 4. However, it's not the greatest common factor because there's something else that's common between these two terms, and that's the x value. So Harik, what is the greatest common factor? So greatest common factor is equal to, in this case? 4x. Good, 4x. Okay, and the reason why is because it's the biggest number that divides into both terms, and it's also the biggest variable. All right, if we had the same question, and it looked like this, Now what is the greatest common factor? <coughs> Hands up if you know. Greatest common factor here. Okay, there's only about a, a quarter of you guys that are that know this. Mark, can you take a guess? It's 4x. It's 4x again, yes, good. I thought you might know, but your hand wasn't up. The reason why is because you can't go higher than x because this term doesn't have anything higher than x. So your greatest common factor is limited, it's really limited by the lowest number or variable. Okay, and that's, what, that's how I want to teach it to you. That's how I want you guys to recognize what the greatest common factor is. So for the greatest common factor, the way I teach it is you always look in the binomial, you look at the smallest number first. Okay, I know it's a little bit opposite to intuitive, it says greatest, but you're going to look at the smallest number. If the smallest number divides into the bigger numbers in the term, this could be a binomial, it could be a trinomial or a polynomial, 
It doesn't matter. You're going to find the smallest number. Okay, why? Because you know if that's the smallest number, you can't go any bigger than that number. You can't go any bigger than, than 4. Because 5, 6, nothing else will go into 4 evenly. Okay, so you, your greatest common factor, you look for the smallest number. It's the 4. Does the 4 go into the other numbers within your polynomial? Does it go into 8x or does it go into 8? Yes, it does. Then you look for the smallest variable. In this case, it's x. Okay, because there's only x. So we know our greatest common factor then is 4x. Okay, I should have maybe shown this over here. The square over there. Just to show you that the, the smallest, actually no, sorry, I'll leave it there. The smallest number could have a higher variable. So it has a higher order variable, but it's still the smallest number. So they're two separate things. You look for the smallest number first. In this binomial, it's 4. And then you look for the smallest variable. It's x. Does 4x go into both of these terms? Yes, it does. That's your greatest common factor. OK? So now, once you have your greatest common factor, you want to factor it out of the two terms. So the way we do that is you take your, your two terms. Let's start this question again. So we want to factor this term. You take your greatest common factor, put it on the outside. We know it's 4x. We started with our smallest number. Does it divide into 8? Yes, it does. That's your greatest common factor. Okay. Now we put a pair of brackets. And we divide each term in the binomial by 4x. Okay, because it'll show us what's left. So we do 4x squared divided by 4x plus 8x divided by 4x. And it's 4x, 4x squared divided by 4x is just x, because the 4s cancel to 1. And exponent law 2 minus 1 is 1, so x to the 1, we don't need to show it. And this is 2. Okay? So there, I've factored this now. To see if I factored it correctly, I can go ahead and use distributive property and expand this back out. So I get 4x squared plus 8x. Notice how I have not changed the expression by factoring. Always good to double check. If you're not sure if you factored correctly, you can multiply at the end. If you get the same answer, then you know you've done it correctly. Any questions so far? This step, I don't do. I skip this step. And I imagine you guys will skip that step as well, pretty quickly. Okay, because you can do this in your head. You can do the 4 divided by 4x and divided by 4x up here. So as soon as you have the greatest common factor, you know it's 4x, you divide this term by 4x, it's going to be right underneath it anyways you put the results in the brackets. So 4x divided by 4x, 4x squared divided by 4x is x, 8x divided by 4x is 2. Okay, so I don't imagine you're gonna do this step where you put it in brackets divided by the term for very long. Okay, you might do that at first, but very quickly you should be able to do that in your head. All right, so let's look at a few more examples. All right, so we want to Factor fully. That's the only instructions we got. Jason, what's the greatest common factor? Uh, three. Sorry? Three. Three, excellent. And how'd you know it was three? Because three is the smallest number. Good, it's the smallest number, and why not three x? Because it doesn't have an x. Right, because the x is not common. That's why. So it can't be the greatest common factor. So it's just three. And now what am I left with, Jason? Uh, three. So it's your first time doing this, so you're not used to it yet, but you got to picture this is what's going on. Okay? So your first term will be 6x divided by 3 is what? Good. And then 3 divided by 3? Positive or negative? Excellent. And you're done. Okay, if you go to multiply this out now, we would get 6x plus 3. So we know it's right. OK, 
Okay, Andy. What do we got? What's our greatest common factor? 5k4. Like excellent. It's like exponent of 4. Okay. Now what? Bracket. Good. 5k to the power of 2. Excellent. Plus 3k. Close bracket. Okay. What's k no. to the 4 divided by k to the 4? Yeah, sorry, just 3. Good. Okay, lots of different things happening with this one. It's quite a bit different. Andy handled it perfectly. Okay, let me explain what happened. So, the first thing I taught you to do, start with the smallest number. If it divides equally into the other terms in the polynomial, that's your greatest common factor. In this case, it does not. It doesn't go into 25, unfortunately. So the next step you need to take is you divide this term, the smallest term, divided by 2. If you don't get an even number when you divide by 2, or if it's an odd number, right away, you know that it's no good. Okay? So what we're trying to do is, we're, when we have this the smallest, comp, the smallest term and it doesn't go into the next term, we need to find the next biggest term that goes into this number. First, before we check any other numbers. So I do that by starting off to divide by 2, because if this was evenly divided into 2, that would be the next biggest number. Because it's an uneven number, it's 7.5, we don't consider it. The next step I do is I divide this term by 3. That gives me 5. Okay, I have an even number now. I'm going to check to see if 5 goes into all the other terms. Okay, in this case, 5 does go into 25. That's my greatest common factor. Or I should say greatest common number. I need to find now my greatest common variable. So I just look for the variable. It's much easier. You just look at the highest exponent. Okay, they always can divide into each other evenly because of exponent law. So it's just k to the fourth. Any questions there? You got a question here? Okay. Yeah, the exponents always divide in, so that's pretty easy. You just pick the lowest exponent. Okay, and then what we're left with, we divide each term by 5k to the fourth. Divide by 5k to the exponent of 4. So we're left with 5k to the exponent of 2, 6 minus 4. And we're left with k to the 4 divided by k to the 4 is 1. So we're just left with 15 divided by 5 is 3. Any questions there? Yeah. So is there any more cut to taking when the exponent is higher than 2? Or do we have to factor it every time? Uh, no, you have to factor it. Exactly. Yeah. There are some ex ex shortcuts in exponent or in factoring. You'll see later. Okay. All right. Let's do a harder one. Let's see why. Okay. Julian, what do you think the greatest common number is, first of all? Okay. Yeah, it's one. Yeah, you're right. There's nothing really in common. So if it's one, we typically don't even write the one. We just leave it because we know in front of that one there's going to be variables, right? So we could put one here, but you'll see soon you won't want to put that. Now, what's the com most common, greatest common variable, Julian? Five. No, oh, you did the numbers already. You said it was one variables now. Is there anything common? No. 
Can we do anything? Can we can we simplify? Can, is there anything common in these two terms at all? No. There's nothing you can do here. So this was a bit of a trick question. You cannot cannot factor. Okay, and this happens. Happens in grade 11 too. There's nothing common. There's nothing you can factor. You could say I factored one out, but you're not going to change anything. Okay, so you have to be aware of that. Don't think that happens too often because it doesn't. There's usually something in common if you get the question, but it's possible. Okay? Next one. This one. I'm going to say, Luigi, you're going to do this one. This is uh, D on example 2, D on page 231. All right, what's the greatest common number, first of all? Uh, seven. Good, so you start with the lowest one. Does it go into 28? Yes. Does it go into to 21? Yes, it does. So that's my greatest common number. Now, my greatest common variable? Uh, C squared and B. Okay, so I agree with D. There's a problem with the C squared. Unless I copied it down wrong. No. Nope. See this, Luigi? Uh, yeah. Oh. There's yeah, only a C. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you can't C. take C squared. Right. So C D. Uh, yes. Uh, That's your greatest common factor. Excellent. Now you're going to put a set of brackets and you're going to divide each term by 7d to the exponent of 3. Okay, Gennaro, so what's the first term, Gennaro, divided by 7cd3? 21c. So 21 divided by 7. Yeah, 3. 3, yeah. Oh, c to the exponent of 3. Yes. And d. d cubed divided by d cubed? Oh, no, d. Right. Remember from the zero exponent law, if we have this, we have d3 minus 3, which is d to the zero. Anything to the exponent of zero is 1. Okay? So 3c cubed, keep going. Negative 28 divided by 7 is? Negative 4. Good. And c, just c. Yep. And then d to the d squared. D squared. Yep. And keep going. Plus, plus one. one. Oh, Excellent. Nothing. C. Excellent. C divided by C is one. D cubed divided by D cubed is one. So it's just one. Okay. Just say it's one times one times one. It's one. All right. That's it. Now you can multiply out to double check, see if you're right. But that's right. Any questions there? It's kind of uh, as tough as they get. I want to show one with a common factor that's negative. No, they don't show you that, actually. All right, we'll go to example three on page 232. This is binomial common factor. Okay, in this case, it's not a number or a variable that's just common, it's a binomial. So we have an actual entire binomial that is common between the two terms. So in that case, we can factor that binomial straight out. Nothing common between the, the other two terms here, but y plus 1 can be factored out. So I have y plus 1 is common. I'm going to divide each of these terms by y plus 1. Divide by y plus 1. What I'm left with, this crosses out, is 3x plus 7z. Okay? So I factored out the entire binomial, common in both terms. Any questions there? Let's 
see one more. Sir. Yep. Wouldn't you have to foil it after? Uh, if you foil it, you could foil it and expand, but you could end up getting back to where you were. Okay, that's what foiling does, is it expands and goes the other way. So factoring goes one way, and foiling and simplifying goes the other way. So generally, when we're factoring, we're kind of doing the opposite of expanding and simplifying. All right, so in this case, again, you can see that there's a binomial that's common. Marie, how would you factor this? What's common between this term and this term? Oh, so one, I guess? No, there's, some, there's a binomial that's common. A binomial is a two-term polynomial. X minus three. Good, X minus three. And now what are you left with when you divide each term by X minus three? You're left with? Oh, 2x. These right. cross out, right? 2x, yeah. And then these cross out, you're left with? Five. Yeah, positive or negative? Negative. Good. And that's it. Okay, and then you guys could do uh, distributive property or FOIL to see if you ended up with the same results if you wanted to work back. Okay, but you'd have to simplify and expand this, and then FOIL and simplify and expand that. Alright, so when we have a term, when we have an expression like this, x squared plus 3x, so just as I mentioned, when we go this way, it's called factoring, and when we go this way, it's called expanding. Okay, so you guys have got familiar with expand and simplify. We're going to now get familiar with going the other way. All right, the last example I want to show is called factor by grouping. when we factor by grouping, what we're doing is we're partial factoring the polynomial. Daniel? Yeah. So what that means is we're going to factor the first two expressions and then we're going to factor the last two expressions. So Daniel, if I wanted to find the common factor to, between these two expressions, the greatest common factor, what would it be? A. Good, it would just be A. Good. And what, and what would you be left with? X. X, Y. No. Remember, you divide A out of this and then out of this. So then it's X. A, Y. No. So there's two terms. Daniel, you can't create, take a sum and turn it into a product. So you got to divide this by A and then this by A. So you're right, it's X and Y, but it would be X. Plus Y. Good, X plus Y. Good. And this one, Daniel, what's the greatest common factor between these two? Two. Positive 2, and you're left with? X plus, y. X plus y. Okay, now we can see we're not done factoring. The reason why is because we have a binomial that's common now. So we can factor that binomial out. X plus y. Then we're left with dividing it out. A plus 2. Okay? Last question. So do you guys see how this factor by grouping allowed us to factor this? At the beginning, there's nothing in common between all four terms. But because we grouped the two terms that were, were similar, and then grouped these two terms, we were able to eventually factor it to this. So that's why you'd use factor by grouping. Okay, it doesn't work for anything less than four terms. Okay, so you wouldn't even have to worry about it. In this case, we do have four terms again, so we're going to 
factor by grouping. What's common between these first two terms? What's the greatest common factor? Kyle? Between these two terms. Three. Good. So you start with the lowest one. Does it go in? No. Divide by two. Uneven. Divide by three. Three goes in. Three goes into here. So that it's three what? X. Good. And what are you left with? Remember, you're going to divide this term by this. So what's this divided by this? 3x. Okay, do you see that, how the 9 divides by the 3? And then 15x divided by 3x? 5. Yes, plus 5. Okay. And now the last term, because there's nothing in common, when we, when we factor by grouping, we actually do factor the 1 out. 3x plus 5. So although we don't change the expression, we need to create this set of brackets so that we have a binomial in common. So that's the one time when we do factor 1 out. So that leaves us then with 3x plus 5 is a common factor, and you're left with 3x plus 1. Any questions? Yeah? So why wouldn't it work for more than 4? Is it because the brackets would be with different terms? Like there would be more terms in the brackets? I didn't say for more than four, I said it doesn't work for less than four. Oh, okay. Because even if you found a common factor between two terms, if they weren't originally common with the third term, it's not going to help you. Okay? okay? Yeah, I heard more. No. Any other questions? All right. That's it for the lesson.